Hi, welcome back to another Ether Physics. This is my fifth episode, and that's why I brought a friend with me. His name is Serge. Serge says hi. Hi, Serge. Hi. Hi, I'm Serge, and I'm here to assist Omar in his explaining of the physics of the world. I was wrongly briefed, wasn't I? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna teach you about the physics of the world. I'm just gonna... Well, a part of it. Yeah, maybe, I guess, a little bit. Uh, about my idea about the ether. I got a comment in one of my episodes of some guy that I thought was interesting to mention. Yeah, let's start with this part. It begins with... I, I saw on his... his Google, Google Plus, Plus page, yeah. Google Plus page, I saw one, one, one... Image. One image, and that image told us that he saw the book of Walter Russell and he saw the resemblance between works of Walter Russell and the book of Maxwell, and that's what I had a couple of years ago. I, I actually read Walter Russell's book, the same book, I, I recognized the image that he used, and <coughs> uh, I can remember myself reading his book and really got inspired by it. And later on, I got a hold of James Clerk Maxwell's uh, scientific release papers of his entire life, I guess. And in that book, I saw, well, the same image. So it, it made me thinking, like, this guy, James Clerk Maxwell, thinks the same as that Walter Russell does. And that idea of Walter Russell is... It's, it's just a feeling, it feels right, it makes a lot of sense and it looks in, in similar. the mind. And yeah, it, it has a lot of similarities, of course. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot for that comment. Thanks a lot for inspiring me again in, in rereading Walter Russell stuff. Thank you. So, did you have any new insights on it? What, what it did was, what, what I really liked about Walter Russell's idea was his idea of uh, the periodic table. Because uh, he didn't have a periodic table like yeah. we do have nowadays, but he uses harmonics of of ether and the, the, the swirly thing. The swirly thing. Yeah. A little bit like that, maybe a little curvier, but. And. I think Santa Claus just fell off the roof. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay, Mr. Santa Claus? So yeah, that's, uh, <coughs> that's one of the things that I, I found very interesting about Walter Russell's work. His idea of harmonics and how harmonics are part of nature and how, how atoms are harmonics. I know a little bit about music and uh, its theory and uh, I, I have seen this form uh, earlier on with the with the octave uh, uh, placements and uh, in high school I learned a periodical table like the, the the chart with all the squares in it but when I saw his interpretation of the periodic table with this shape in it with it octaves, was yeah. it was a, a different way of looking at it and it gave me a bit of new insight yeah, the idea is that the whole grouping thing became more clear to me here would be 92 uranium and on the top would be hydrogen <laughs> hydrogen one proton wow that was left-handed you're experiencing new uh, stuff right here you can write uranium your a <laughs> um. i am uranium <laughs> well that's a neat trick you don't see that every day on youtube he also commented something yeah and it has a very large image yeah. along with it so what are we seeing we, on this image he showed us that he thought that this that the milky way look looks like a torus like this yeah donut shape torus shape and that there is an ether flow because of the torus shape and the rotation of the torus around its core and that our solar system would be somewhere here. it's working it's working it's working it looks scary yeah and his, his, his quote would be gravity. There can be no gravity without the existence of the ether because the dynamics of the ether around any rotating physical object in space is the cause of the resulting pressure gradient that in turn led to the gravity effect of that rotating object. Ahmed Sindhi. Yeah, he lost me halfway there. That's a long sentence. 
Maybe, maybe we should place some commas in it. Yeah, let's break it up. There can be no gravity without the existence of the ether. So that's where, where it starts off. Yeah. That's a hypothesis. I totally agree with the first sentence. Okay. 100%. I do not believe that there can be gravity without an ether because I believe that gravity is caused by rotation in the ether. But not in the way he presents here. A little bit different. So, so gravity is a result of uh, behaviors and processes happening within the ether. Yeah. Okay. So the ether is the framework where gravity can exist in. Yeah. Can exist exactly. in. Exactly. Okay, the next sentence is because the dynamics of the ether around any rotating physical object in space is the cause of the resulting pressure gradient. That in turn led to the gravity effect of that rotating object. Okay, so we can put a comma after gradient again. There can be no gravity without the existence of the ether because yeah. the dynamics of the ether around any rotating physical, physical object, object in so space is the cause of, of the, the resulting, resulting pressure, pressure gradient. gradient. So that means without a rotation there would be no pressure gradient and that pressure gradient led, leads to the gravity effect. So if there would be no rotation there would be no gravity. That's what, that's what he says here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we, we can interpret this idea that the proton the mass of a particle, yeah. uh, the protons, the neutrons, uh, the electrons, that they themselves are rotating flows of ether. And if that is true, then this idea in reality could be true. But it wouldn't be because of the mass rotating itself, it would be that mass itself is a rotation. And that, would, that could be possible if we have a vortex shape like this. It will start to rotate once it is rotating around its core. It, the, the, whole, the whole vortex itself would rotate around the axis that goes through the center. Mm -hmm. That itself would be a rotation. Maybe he means that the pressure gradient that comes along with the rotation of the entire trefoil knot, that that would be the pressure gradient for gravity. Okay. That might be true. I don't know. I, I, I think that electrons have an, an influence as well. That electrons are, are a part of gravity itself. Well, they do have a charge, right? Yeah. So everything that has a charge has a, a gravity field around it. But what would be the charge? Because I think that the what I just talked about, the rotation of the entire particle or, or the entire travel or not would be the charge itself, that that rotation pressure gradient. So like right spin is plus and yeah. left spin is minus? Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. And I think that gravity itself is caused by the electrons that are on the spherical. So this is how most physicists see protons nowadays. And I think that right in, in the middle of this whole motion would be a trefoil knot that it's is rotating yeah. and the fact that all the ether around it rotates gives it a charge. Okay. That's what I think. I'm not sure but that's what I think. And I think gravity itself comes because of this thing is rotating like the earth is rotating around its core and it has ether around it like we have like the air or how do we call it an atmosphere. Because of the rotation of the earth, the earth, the Coriolis effect, you get huge vortices on uh, the spin earth, off. spinning, yeah, yeah, spinning motions of air particles. And I believe that the same happens around the proton, and every every core of that rotation we call an electron. Yeah, you also see, uh, see there uh, in that process, like uh, in in the northern hemisphere, they yeah. turn right, and in the south hemisphere, they turn in inverse direction. Yeah, inverse direction. So, so, that, so that's where, where where you get on the the, the, the macro is micro and the micro yeah. is macro. And I, I believe that those electrons, yeah, that in the center of the rotating parts, there is a line of vortex that can connect to another atom with its own electrons. And that that connection between the electrons of atoms is the cause of the gravity. Okay. That's what I believe. I and that's cannot I cannot calculate it yet or prove it mathematically, but that's what I believe. Yeah, but you're working on it. I'm working on the it. Li the links are below. 
Yeah, and it's a hard job. It's really hard. <laughs> no, you, you can use all the help you can, uh, you, you can muster up. I definitely can, so. yeah. So maybe check out uh, his work, maybe uh, give some, some comments uh, in the, the Google Docs. I am documents. translating it, it at the moment, it's not fully translated yet. Mm. You can take a look, see what you think about the stuff that's already translated, maybe if you're Dutch, uh, find out the whole thing. Yeah. And as you can see, they all have a so spherical this is a Taurus gun. form around it, they never hit each other. Basically they're all tiny twisting toruses flowing through the air. Cool. I saw one that was twisting like this, but on top of here, their little ones came off. Yeah, what, that's turbulence. What happened there? That's the turbulence in the air. That's the reaction of the turbulence on the particles on the edge. So because of the friction of air, yeah. these particles start to rotate in a different direction. And then they break up and yeah. form a new one? They form new vortices. Okay. Uh, but only if there is a little bit of turbulent force. Yeah, to, enough to break them up, yeah. uh, up a little bit, but not to... Not, not to completely destroy to, Yeah. Okay. So that itself is turbulence. A vortex that explodes and creates a new vortex. Okay. Yeah, well, then it loses some of its momentum forward and starts to angle or, or turn in a direction. And while it's turning, it, it gets extra turbulence and it gets worse. Yeah, and it loses force. Yeah. So that explains why planes drop out of the sky when they encounter heavy turbulence. They, they, they drop a little bit and yeah. then they fly up again when they're in like steadier airstreams. Funny, huh? Good to know. So thanks a lot for watching. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thanks for helping me out <laughs> in my fifth episode. And uh, I hope uh, to see you guys soon. Bye bye. Yeah, smash that like button. Like, like, comment, comment. Yeah. Subscribe. It really does help. Give us money. Everything. It Everything you own. <laughs> <laughs> Donate here. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you like and comment, you push the videos up in YouTube. So it helps. It helps getting more views. You already earned five cents, people. Five cents. Five whole cents. I didn't earn it yet, but... No, it, it's, it's the worth of his channel right now. Yeah, five cents, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. <laughs>